So a few days ago, I set a goal for myself. Could I beat Metroid NES for the first time in 2023? But it was gonna be live on stream, and this is how it went. These things are the worst f***ing thing Nintendo's ever done because of this stupid ass part of the game. Oh joy, oh joy, the fun just keeps on coming. One mistake and it's all f***ing gone. Oh, chat, I can't do this. I didn't think much of it. I've seen a lot of speedrunners do it. I would associate myself as a pretty good gamer, all things considered, and I had gotten a f comment like this and I wanted to prove this guy wrong. Suffice to say that there was a lot of frustrations and a lot of death, so I guess let me just take you through my thought process and my experience playing this game for the first time in 2023. Before we get into that, let me give you some brief history on the game itself so we are on the same page and you know that I know that it's an important game, alright? So don't leave me that <laughs> comment. Metroid was originally created by Gunpei Yokoi, Yoshio Sakamoto, and Satoru Okada in 1986. The game itself was an in-between of Mario and the Zelda franchise, taking that 2D approach from Mario and the exploration that was utilized in Zelda. During production, the team, which by the way was Nintendo R&D 1, decided that it would be cool if the person in the suit was female. The Metroid franchise took a little bit of a mature horror approach to gaming, and that is shown as early as this title. The developers also took note of the film Alien and modeled Samus after that film's main character. Alien was directed by Ridley Scott, whom they would end up naming the huge big bad of the game franchise after. This original Metroid game was hugely important in what video games have become today. It birthed a wholly new genre of gaming called the Metroid. Metroidvanias, which have lived on in games like Ori in the Blind Forest, Ori in the Will of the Wisps, maybe the third Ori. There's other games other than Ori, Axiom Verge, games like that are a huge part of the future of what Metroidvanias have become, and it's so cool that it has an impact that has literally started from this original game, and goddamn, thank god they're so much different now, because... Oh. This game essentially showed developers the potential of the 2D adventures and pushing the bounds of the story, exploration, and abilities, all things that are still true to this day. Now, what I think is interesting about this is that my first Metroid was Dread, which of course is the most recent game, and so going back to the first one ever after getting what many consider to be the peak of the franchise, personally what I consider to be the peak of the franchise, is going to be a very interesting time. So come with me as I play this iconic game for the first time ever in 2023. Like a naive child, I looked at this game with excitement, a glimmer of hope in my eye that I would be able to beat it within a few hours. You see, I've been familiar with this game for a long time. I've seen plenty of playthroughs and speedruns over the years, and usually they're around one to two hours. I was like, of course, I won't be able to knock it out that fast, but like three to four to even five hours, it shouldn't be that difficult to get it done. Then I realized something. There's no map, and there's no direction. And time had gone by of me aimlessly wandering with no idea of what to do or how to defend myself against the ridiculously, and I mean f***ing horrendously powerful enemies. Now, if you've seen any of my other Metroid videos, you might know that I don't really enjoy mindless exploring with no purpose. I like to at least know that I'm sort of in the right area and that I'm hopefully gonna be able to find something soon. And before you flip out and you're like, oh my God, Josie, exploration being lost is the whole point of Metroid. Tell that to Fusion, tell that to Dread, okay? Some of the, the best two games in the Metroid franchise, might I add, so simmer down. So anyways, I look at this game that I was so excited to dive into it and I'm just pissed. All live on stream, by the way, at twitch.tv slash Josie Wolf. Because, yeah, they're harder than the, the recent curves. I can't even comprehend the pain I'm in right now. But I realized there's a very simple solution. It's going to cost me maybe my reputation. Cost me maybe a couple of the comments. But the only viable option at a certain point with this game is to whip out a guide. I just... I couldn't spend hours and hours doing nothing in a super frustrating game. But hold on right there. The original Metroid, released in 1986 by the way, and we've already covered that, but just in case you forgot, it came with something. It wasn't just the cartridge in that little box you got. It was a box, a cartridge, and oh, what's that over there? Uh -huh, a manual. And so if you're really feeling lost in Metroid as a kid back in the 80s, you could have been like, ah, mom, I don't know what to do. And she's like, Look at the flipping manual that came with the game, kid. And you're like, oh my god, perfect. Easy money. Now I, now I can know what to do, where to go. I just am basically doing the 2023 version of that manual, which in this case would take the form of an internet wiki how, mayhaps a not Nintendo life 
situational, something like that. And so I'm going to assume that I'm still sticking with the original spirit of the game. Something also that I think is insane is that they literally had a Nintendo help hotline back in the day where you could call and ask them your problem. So Nintendo knew that their games were freaking brutal. And you guys watching this, calling me out in the comments, you know. So before you leave this comment that I can't play video games, that blah, 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 I want you to do a couple things for me. I want you to take a breath, go outside, breathe in the fresh air, talk to a girl, come back and then leave whatever comment you're going to. Anyways, that was kind of a sidetrack. So with the help of a guide, I could finally start actually experiencing this game for what it is and maybe appreciate it a bit more and stop, you know, looking like this. Oh, chat, I can't do this. This is the worst game I've ever played in my entire life. Into some of the specifics of the game, Samus does play pretty well, especially for an NES game. She's relatively smooth, and it's really cool to see how far her playstyle and feel has changed from this until Dread. The moveset is definitely a little bit dated. It was difficult making sort of precise jumps, and f***ing the difficulty in this game is no joke. I was around halfway through this game and I was still being absolutely bodied by enemies. There's so damn many on the screen at the same time that are just all coming at you from all different angles that it's near impossible to stay. Like I even got a couple of their energy tanks. Puh, those didn't matter. They. Th the flippin' enemies, they ate them like candy. They said, give me that energy, Samus, I want that shit. And so because of all the surrounding events, the optimistic person that I started out with at the beginning of the stream has turned into a maniac, frustrated lunatic who was just pissed at some point i was even questioning if i liked nintendo i could have turned into a flipping playstation channel for all you guys know maybe an xbox one i don't even know i don't even know at this point i was fuming but i brought myself down a little bit i realized i can't hate nintendo for one fucking truly awful game i can't that's not that's not fair but holy f I was pissed. But here's what I've realized. The only way to play this game in 2023 is to sit down with a full game guide and utilize save states and rewind that are present in Nintendo Switch Online. To be honest, for the first few deaths I experienced in this game, I really didn't want to use rewind. I was hellbent on not doing that. I wanted to experience this game in the original true form as close as I could be, but I was still playing it on Nintendo Switch Online, making it easy to stream and easily accessible for me. But after going through a myriad of hell, <laughs> I started doing stuff like this. Nope. Oh my god. Because I just couldn't get myself to be constantly going back and back and back every time going to the same spots, dying over and over and over again, because at a certain point it just wasn't even fair. Tons of people have never even gotten through this game because of the frustration they experienced early on here. Holy, I like, if this was my first game I had ever played, I probably would have never picked up another game ever, because this is traumatizing. I am, I am a grown woman and I, I'm traumatized. I can't imagine playing this as a kid. I'd never want to touch a video game. Now quickly, I will say that the graphics and the sheer scope of this game is very impressive. They really made an impressive looking exploration based space game and that's something that's damn impressive. Too bad like 20 years later, they fixed all the issues and made this game pretty much obsolete. Metroid Zero Mission came out in 2004 on the Game Boy Advance and it has fixed pretty much all the problems people had with this game and just created a much better experience. Now, it's not available on Nintendo Switch Online quite yet, so I haven't gotten the joy to experience it myself, and I'm very, very much looking forward to when that comes out and actually finishing getting the story of this game because I can't put myself through this. This is my own, if someone were to describe to me my own personal hell, it would look like Metroid NES. It's upsetting, but Metroid Zero Mission is a huge improvement from everything I've heard, and it basically takes away any reason to play this game. You don't need to play it for story benefit. You don't need to play it to, to jump into the Metroid franchise. It's probably the worst game to get you to jump into the franchise. It's going to probably get you to despise the franchise. If I didn't start with Dread, loved it, then got to Prime, had a good time, went to Fusion, loved it. Super Metroid was a whole different story, but I still thought it was all right, but definitely better than this game. But if I started with this game, I would have hated it. So now that we've come full circle and you have the option to play Metroid Zero Mission, goddamn, just wait. Just wait and play that. Don't traumatize yourself. Metroid NES is pure pain. There are major power-ups that are hidden in just random ass places with no rhyme or reason. Getting each power-up, sure, it's cool, but it's not worth the absolute chaos that surrounds them. Obviously, it's fun to see that original morph ball bomb, the missile, and all that kind of stuff. And it's very cool to do that OG wall jump. I mean, if you can do that, you are a god-tier gamer. So, so maybe I am, chat. But if you want to play the original NES Metroid for the first time in 2023, I think the only viable option is to play the Nintendo Switch Online Special Edition of this game. You see, 
The special editions of the games are curated by Nintendo. Essentially, they give you all the power-ups and they put you in the end of the game. So you, you're playing the original Metroid, full energy takes, full missile, missiles, full power-ups, everything you could possibly need, and just sit there and you kick Ridley's ass. It's a good time. And this allows you to see those original graphics, allows you to see some of the mechanics of the game, how the power-ups work, stuff like that. Beat the boss, beat Ridley, without all the pain that surrounds it. So you could do something like this, and if you want to get more of the story, you could play something like Metroid Zero Mission to get that story from that linear perspective while still having experienced where the franchise came from. The reason I think this game is cool, and if you've ever considered playing it, it could be worth your time, is to see where the franchise originated. Because of course, that's going to be an interesting comparison, especially to present time games. Basically, by playing the Nintendo Switch Online version, you get to see where the franchise came from and your day isn't completely ruined. If you grew up with this game and you have the whole thing mapped out in your head, you play it till this day, yeah, you probably still love the game. That's due to immense nostalgia. I mean, hey, we all have nostalgia. My favorite game of all time is Pikachu's Poke Park. Or, I mean, at least it's up there. So, I mean, we can't we can't hold our favorites as the best games. This game does not translate over very well to this day, and I'm going to have to say, I recommend that you stay far, far away. Overall, I wouldn't recommend this to my worst enemy. This was probably the worst thing I've ever done, especially live on stream. I usually have a good time. I mean, I was cussing like a sailor. I was pissed. I was upset. I walked away from that stream defeated. And I was defeated. But, like I said, cool to see where it came from. Not a necessary excursion to go on. Check it out on Nintendo Switch Online Special Edition. F mess around in it for like 10 minutes tops. Get out of there with your sanity intact and you're good to go. I'll see you in this video. It's a banger. I hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe.